Hi, I'm Donna Marie. I've been coming to Southside for nearly two years. Um, I'm mummy to Katie and Molly, which there's every possibility they could jump in in this video because you don't get peace and they're here all the time. Um, lockdown. So Nick asked me to do um, a take 10. What has lockdown meant in my life? It's been a roller coaster. So at the beginning, of um, the lockdown, I had some anxieties and didn't know what it was going to look like, how work was going to work, how it was going to go with the girls for schooling, who was going to watch them, um, same as everybody else, lots of anxieties. But before lockdown, I had a bit of an anxiety attack and a wee bit of keeping myself away from everybody and wasn't really coming to church for about six weeks beforehand. So um, then got into a wee bit of routine and uh, I caught the COVID, as the girls say. They wouldn't come near me, they were shouting, oh no, she's got the COVID. So for three and a half weeks, I wasn't really feeling very well, um, trying to, to get up and make sure the girls were fed. But that was basically kind of it. Um, just making sure they were fed and uh, that they were in, a bed, in their bed at a certain time. Um, so before all this, I felt like God kept telling me probably for about a year to, to stay still, be still, be still. I don't like being still. Um, I live on my own with the girls, but I'm never in. I'm in and out and... I'm away to the gym or away to the shops or I make an excuse just to get out of the house because I, do, I don't like being in the house. I feel like you get a bit claustrophobic. So this was a nightmare to think, oh, could only go out once a day. Um, in fact, when I had the COVID, as the girl said, that I wasn't allowed out at all and had to rely on people dropping packages off, which was the 1010, thankfully, um, for some meals. Anyway, I'm just kind of babbling. <laughs> but um, at the beginning of it all, there was a scripture that kept coming to my head, which is bizarre because I don't really pick the Bible up. I prefer the relationship with Jesus as in what he's saying to me through worship or how I feel a feeling of him. But when I picked the Bible up, I, I really, really struggled to read it. So when this scripture kept coming back, I was like, oh, right, okay. So I'll just, I'm, I'm going to read it to you. It's Matthew 6, 25 to 28. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any one of you be worrying, add a single hour to your life? Now that's quite, um, that, that speaks to me, because I worry about everything. I worry about um, what people think about me. I worry about, am I doing it right? Or, um, just just worry, worry about always, it's always negative thoughts in my head, though I try to be positive, it's always negative. Um, so it kept coming on and it kept coming on and I kept, like, I started praying into it. I was like, what do you mean, like, what, what, what are you trying to tell me here, God? Which I knew what he was trying to tell me, but um, I was praying into it and I started to realise that... <sighs> My life is what what God wants it to be. God God made me. He knew me before I was ever in my mum's womb. And uh, he had a he's got a plan for me and it's me that's not following the plan because I don't take the time to listen to him and I think I know it better and I worry about all these things, but I'm not worrying in case what God thinks about me, I'm worrying about what other people think about me and yes that's important it is important and you want to come across properly and nice and people to think that that um you are a nice person but 
if we go, if we pray and we listen to God, that's the person we will be. But we will lose the anxiety and we lose the the worry of how other people think because the most important person that I want to please is God. So prayed and prayed into it and started really feeling like that relationship I had when I first became a Christian with God was coming back and there was like a fire in my stomach again and I started uh, getting up every morning to do a uh, two prayer groups um on it's on a Facebook live and it's great because I'm then up and I'm I'm ready to go of like the, just that fresh of the Holy Spirit in me um and then I go on and do my day which entails of doing calls for the ten ten or um or going to work or looking after the girls or something like that. But as the day was going on, I was finding myself wanting to know more, like really wanting to, what what else, what else has God got in store and um, what is his plan and what is he really like? <clears throat> so I started doing things on the internet and watching YouTube and I've been watching uh, online Christian classes and uh, taking notes and <clears throat> it was amazing. And then uh, things started to change a wee bit. Like I just, I for like for about the past three weeks, I have just felt happy, and there's there's no anxiety there. I'm not saying that it's away forever, but um, it's certainly through this time in lockdown when it is a hard time and we don't get to see people, and you lack that. I, I lack that adult conversation, though it's a bit better now because I'm back at my work. <clears throat> and then it started. There was like a new verse came to me and it just, um, it, it just, it, again, it kept popping up. So I'll read that one to you. And it was um, Psalm 23, which I'm sure a lot of you know. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, to me, that's where my mind has shifted. I went for the beginning of lockdown worrying about me, worrying about how I look, worrying about what people thought and not worrying about what God was saying as if God was there but he wasn't important. It was like I would turn to God for the the last resort to now changing my day where it's all about learning about God and it's learning what his personality is about. It's, I feel in that verse it's telling me I now realise who my shepherd is and uh, and he loves me for me and I will never be perfect. None of us will be perfect. We'll always fall short. But if I listen to him and I pray and I engage with him, I will get the plan that he has promised me and it, it won't always be good and I won't always feel this great and I'm quite sure my anxiety will come back but I now know instead of worrying about it and talking to everybody else first, I'm going to turn to God and tell him how I feel and and how he will help me through it. Um. This has just been a bit of a baffle, but <laughs> I've just loved, I've, the lockdown's been up and down and I love what's happening in my life at this moment and the opportunities is actually arising. Um, and I just hope that you're all well and I miss you so much and so does the girls and we can't wait to see you all again. Um, and I would just, uh, the song that has kept me going through this, um, lockdown has been the UK blessing amazing absolutely amazing so 
I think I've just about got the 10 minutes. <laughs> so, God bless. Hope you're all well. Bye.